We're live. Hey, everybody. Bailey, why don't you say hi? Because then you don't want to be in the kitchen the whole episode, I'm sure. Hello, people out there in Facebook land. Why are you hitting yourself in the head, huh? All right. Can you see us and hear us, everyone? Anyone? We've got a great episode today. I hope you guys will share this one. It's episode 62, and it's all in the kitchen. So all the questions we're going to take are from kitchen type questions and food type questions. Teresa says I can hear I hear you. But you don't see me? I assume they can see you. I've never had you. anybody not see me. But all right, here they we go. Can see. Yep. All right. Well, hey everybody and welcome to episode 62 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss program, and this is where I answer your questions about healthy permanent and sustainable weight loss. Best way to submit a question is through my website at eatunprocessed.com. But today we're only taking questions about food and lots of them have come in so I decided to do all recipes today since my partner John Pierre couldn't make it. We'll always keep doing at least one recipe but today we're going to do six recipes. We're going to do pancakes, we're going to do waffles, we're going to do airplane salad, we're going to do stuff and muffins, we're going to do uh, blueberry oat groats and we are going to do ah cherry sorbet so basically we're going to do breakfast lunch and dinner but if you're on the ultimate weight loss program it's breakfast lunch and dinner so let's get started all of these recipes were based on questions that actually came to me so it's kind of cool so i actually took your questions and decided to do a recipe with it so first recipes i'm going to do are the banana fluffy pancakes and the waffle this is not my recipe it actually is a recipe of someone named big man's world never met him i emailed him that i was going to do his recipe he's got a blog i don't really have time to read blogs and they're often very triggering to me to see all those beautiful pictures of food the only blogs i subscribe to are forks over knives not meg notebook and beans not bambi which i highly recommend so what happened was is, I have her name right here. Sally wrote me and said that uh, somebody had asked if I would show how to do pancakes on the show. And I said, well, no, because we already did a demo on pancake and it's on my video page of uh, Facebook because I did it with the, the salad master guy, Peter Hunt. And she wrote me and she explained because of her job, she's not allowed to be on Facebook, so therefore she can't see that video. And I never put that one on YouTube because it, you know, I just didn't. So I said, sure, I'll do a pancake. So I figured I was gonna do uh, Kathy Fisher's pancake. She has a great oatmeal lemon pancake in her book, Straight Up Food. Uh, I didn't have any cornmeal, so I couldn't do that one. And then I'm just, I'm checking my Facebook feed and this, this picture of these banana pancakes show up and I'm like, wow, that looks good. And it was like first thing in the morning. And I clicked on it, it was from a blog called Big Man's World. It was called, what's the exact name? Healthy, thick and fluffy, flour, flourless banana smoothie pancakes. All the ingredients are vegan and low fat and UWL compliant. And so I tried it that day and I'm very lazy and I made one pancake and I'm like, I'm not gonna just sit here and keep making pancakes as delicious as it was. So I took all the batter and I just put it in the waffle iron. Actually, I'm gonna start preheating my waffle iron right now. I'm using a Krups, I think it was about $20 at Red Bath and Beyond. It's a Belgian, I prefer the Belgian to use for my potato waffles, it's right here. And it says to oil it. I never listen. I've never oiled my wooden salad bowl. I've never oiled my waffle iron, and I've never used oil in the pressure cooker. Whatever they say about oil, it's not true. Just don't use oil for any reason. So anyway, so I made this, I made the pancake. It was delicious, and I had all this batter left, and I'm like, I'm not gonna just keep sitting here making pancakes. So I said, what would happen if I just put the rest of the batter in the waffle iron? It made a great waffle. I could only eat about half of it, so Charles actually ate it for dessert. Wasn't as crunchy. So I'm gonna show you this, and if by any chance you're watching, Armin, of Big Man's World, thank you for such a great recipe. So before I start the recipe, because I'm also gonna teach you how to do oat groats in the, in the pressure cooker, I just wanna talk a little bit about the difference between oat and oat groats, because we talked about this before, and it was Celia that wrote me and said, why do I keep bashing oats? So I don't bash oats. I think oats are great. They're great for lowering cholesterol. They're a whole grain. But for certain people in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, oats are more like flour than they are a whole grain. This is really what oats is. This is the oat groat. And this is what we're gonna be cooking in one of the recipes. If you wanna hold up the bag, this you can get at Whole Foods and many natural food stores. You can buy it online. So these are whole oat groats. And this is what oat groats look like. They look like rice. And they don't taste like rice, but they have a toothsome texture like rice if you cook them correctly. If you cook them incorrectly, they have that glucky ugh, texture like oats, which I don't really care for. Now these are rolled oats. 
This is what most people eat, rolled oats or instant oats. And you can see there's a huge difference. Because what it is, is the real whole grain is the oat growth. And that's what I recommend for everyone, the whole form. That's why I wrote a book called Unprocessed, or if you're in Canada, Unprocessed. So that is the best way to eat your whole grains, is to eat them whole. The next incarnation, and the next best way to eat it would be the steel cut oat. But even then, it's been cut with a sharp blade. It will cook faster. It's not as healthy as the whole grain. And what's even less healthy is the rolled oat, which is what most people eat with a lot of fruit. So they're basically starting their day with sugar and flour because this is very flour-like. It's much higher glycemic, enters the bloodstream much quickly. We, I'm going to use it today, and there are people in UWL that are not triggered by rolled oats that don't overeat on them, but a lot of people, they won't eat their vegetables. They have to have oatmeal and fruit every day. They can't eat it not sweet. They have to, and so I don't think it's a good thing if people are not at goal weight and they absolutely have to have it in, in place of vegetables. And I talked to you about one episode, how this gal, Sherry, who was already at goal weight and thought it was ridiculous for suggesting vegetables for breakfast, decided one day to do that, and even and she was still having a roast, but before, and she still lost about four pounds a month. So we're gonna use both incarnations, but this is the healthiest. But for this, we are using the rolled oats. So you could say, well, you're putting in the blender, grinding into a flour. Yeah, you could say that, because it's true. But again, food addiction is not a one-size-fits-all, it's a one-size-fits-most. In the context of this recipe, there are gonna be people in UWL that can eat it, and some people that can't. Now. Kat wrote me an email, and so did a lot of other people, I have their names here, I could maybe read them, that said that, because there was a little conflict, because somebody in UWL said I shouldn't have made the pumpkin raisin muffins in episode, I forget, maybe it was 56 or something, because it was too triggering. This is on my Facebook page. I'm not broadcasting just to UWL. When I do stuff for UWL, it's always 100% UWL, but I've got like 10 times as many people that follow me on Facebook as that follow me on UWL, and they write me every day with recipes for transition for their families, so I'm gonna do these recipes. If you don't like it, I love you, but don't watch because the people need these recipes, and they're not any more triggering than if you were to watch television and see a commercial or see a billboard or read a magazine. And these are recipes that I would eat. I would never make something that I would personally not eat, with the exception of maybe if I was allergic, and that, that's a whole different story. All right, so let's get started. So I've plugged in my waffle iron to get it hot. I've put my uh, water piece of waterless cook pan on medium on the stove to warm them up. In the blender, I have the almond milk. Again, you can get this recipe at Big, the Big Man's World, The Big Man's World is called Healthy and Thick and Fluffy Flowers Banana Smoothie Pancakes. So I'm making a double recipe. I have got my, because I'm doubling it, half a cup of non-dairy milk. I'm using unsweetened vanilla. I've got my two heaping cups of organic gluten-free rolled oats. I have got my two bananas. These were from the freezer, defrosted. I was, because I didn't have any ones that were ripe and I want to work use really, really ripe bananas when I do stuff like this. I've got my two tablespoons of baking powder. I'm not only using aluminum-free, I'm using sodium-free, which you can get at a company called Energy, often at Whole Foods and other natural food markets, but always online. Big difference in sodium, of baking powder and baking soda if you get it sodium-free and not. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Now, the recipe calls, You can, if you could see this, you could sort of see. It's foaming a little bit. You can Exactly, brilliant. So if you could see, it is foaming because it creates a, a reaction with baking soda, or the baking powder or the baking soda, with the apple cider vinegar. That's how you get things to rise. So even in my non-UWL cakes, like we did last night in my cooking class, um, that's what we use in place of eggs to get it to rise. Now, the recipe calls for one tablespoon of maple syrup. I don't have any maple syrup, and if, uh, so I'm not going to use that. So you, I've done it. You can leave it out. It's absolutely fine. Make sure your banana's sweet. You could use date syrup. That's what my husband uses when he on his pancakes, and I can give you a discount code, Chef AJ. I believe it's 15% off. This is made just for dates. But what I like to do is use whole dates. So I figure a tablespoon of maple syrup is about 60 calories. So for this, two tablespoons would be 120 calories. And so... If seven dates is 110 calories, I'm just gonna put eight dates in. And there we go, because the blender will take care of them. Bailey's here watching, there we go. But again, you could omit it, you know? And they're, not, they're not sweet, so do not worry. All right, where's my little towel? There it is, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna blend very easily. Guys, if you like what I'm doing, please share it with your friends right now. All right, so 
there we go. People are asking about your pants. They're not oh. kiwis. They're just snowflakes uh, no, they're on snowflakes, top of green and red. look at the back of my shirt, guys. Shayla's aunt, Giti, makes all my shirts for me. Because you, you guys are so kind to send me t-shirts, but they're sometimes too small, so we cut them to make them fit. So there's my batter. Look, nice and thick, almost like a cake batter. It says to let it rest for five to ten minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next recipe while we're getting the batter ready. All right. So now, hopefully you believe me that oat groats are the healthiest way to eat oats. And so we're going to make them now in the three-quart Instant Pot, which is my favorite favorite one for everyday use and travel. Well, that and the eight quarts, so I'm gonna plug it in. So I'm gonna start with two cups of oat groats, which I already measured. I'm gonna pour it in. This is Sharon McRae's recipe, by the way. And then three and a half cups of water, and you wanna use boiling water. Now, this isn't completely boiling, but it's pretty hot. I just made it, so three and a half cups. Why boiling water? Because Sharon McRae said so. <laughs> <laughs> I think because otherwise it comes out glucky, and me and Sharon and many other people just don't like the texture of oats when they're glucky. There's a great video on Nutmeg Notebook, one of the two blogs I recommend you subscribe to, Nutmeg Notebook and Beans Bot Bambi, where she actually does a video showing you how to make these. So there we go. There was three and a half cups of almost boiling water to two cups of oat groats. If you always remember to just put it on at 11 o'clock, no problem, away from you. And then we're going to put it on using the manual button for five minutes. And that's it. We're going to move it away. Now, here's the thing. You don't want to release the pressure on this one. The longer you wait, the more rice-like the texture. So Sharon likes to wait two hours, which is great. I ate it at about one hour and then kept it there even longer. The longer you wait, the better the texture and the more like rice. So let me show you what I do. Sharon said, yes, it comes out more chewy when you add boiling water. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Now, so what I do is because I travel so much, when it's ready and, one, and if I'm going to eat it, then I eat it hot and I just put in the frozen blueberries. I like the small wild blueberries, about two cups of groats to one cup of blueberries or have more fruit or less gross, it doesn't matter. So what I do is because I travel is I make up in advance for Charles and then I put these in the freezer and then when he he eats these every day for work after his greens, he can take it out the night before and then he can microwave it at work and then he has his oat gross. So this is a great way to do batch cooking with that. So before I get to the waffle, I want to get something in the oven because that's going to take about 45 minutes. So uh, Noelle wrote that she loved the recipe for the double-baked mashed potato strata with the barbecue sauce that I made, I think it was two episodes ago, mm -hmm. but she said she's allergic to tomatoes. And can I come up with a similar recipe that doesn't have tomatoes? She says not that she's allergic, she can have nightshades because the recipe had bell pepper. So, you know, I know that if you look on blogs that are for people that can't have nightshades, they sometimes have analogs for things like marinara sauce and ketchup made from things like beets and carrots. I've never tried that. But since, so what, the other thing I would recommend is you might be able to get that flavor just with the bell pepper and not with the tomato. I haven't tried. Traditional barbecue sauce generally does have something tomato-y in it, whether it's tomatoes or tomato paste. The reason I was using bell peppers in a while is because I didn't, most barbecue sauces have a lot of sugar and the vegan ones have a lot of dates, and so I wanted sweetness without having to use dates, because if, if dates are in things, I can eat them, but then I eat, tend to eat more of them, so that barbecue sauce did not trigger me at all. So that's why I was using the bell peppers. But here's a whole nother idea, and so what it is, these are called stuffing muffins. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make some mashed potatoes. So you can use the recipe on episode 55 or 57, and you can use your own, whatever recipe you want. Now, I, as you know, like the eight quart Instant Pot because then I, can, then I can cook all four pounds of potatoes, which is what the recipe calls for. And I just got for my, well, I didn't get it for my birthday, I got, it for, uh, got a gift card for the holidays. This fits the eight quart Instant Pot, not the six quart, and it's great for steaming things, especially the potatoes. So I made the recipe on episode 55, and I, I used this nutritional yeast because there was a question from Maggie about why we can't use fortified. Well, you can. Dr. Furman and other doctors don't, re don't recommend it because of the synthetic folic acid. And next week when I'm out there with John Pierre, I have the article that I'll explain more scientifically. But the truth is, is this nutritional yeast called Sari or Sari that was gifted to me by the lovely Michelle Lemus who helped me in my cooking class last night at Boulevard Kitchen. Thank you all for coming if you came. 
it's not only unfortified, it just actually tastes a lot better. So if there's only a quarter cup in the whole recipe uh, of the mashed potatoes, which you could also leave it out if you don't like to use nutritional yeast. So what I did is we had mashed potatoes last night for dinner, and that generally serves three of us, me, Charles, and Bailey, but there was a little bit left over, which inspired this recipe that you asked for. So what I did is I put them in a silicone muffin pan but I didn't fill them up all the way, so I call these stuffing muffins. So these are just the mashed potatoes, and since I made my mashed potatoes thick, you could even take it out right now and eat it, but we're gonna double bake these. So you wanna make sure you leave some room, because otherwise there won't be room for the sauce. Because you could actually do the stuffing muffin with the barbecue sauce like I told you on that episode. Now, guys, please get a silicone muffin pan. Somebody complained that their muffins stuck to the paper liners for the cram muffins. Of course they will. I don't use any oil or fat in my food. That's why I tell you to get a silicone muffin liner. That's why I tell you please read the recipe and follow the directions. So I happen to have some leftover nacho cheese sauce. Now, I will be making this recipe one day when my book comes out, which is soon. I'm going to do a recipe every week, at least one from my new book, Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. And what I like about my nacho cheese sauce recipe, and, and you can use any recipe, it doesn't have to be mine, is mine is made from vegetables, it's made from cauliflower. Most of them are made from potatoes or sweet potatoes, nothing wrong with that, butternut squash, but I like to find ways to people can eat more vegetables. It's always easy to eat lots of potatoes. So what I'm gonna do is gonna, and this is actually, I do a nacho flavor, so what I'm gonna do is on top of each one, I am going to put some sauce, Yeah. and then I'm gonna bake these, and they are gonna be unbelievable and I and Kenny gets so mad because it always seems I'm doing the better <laughs> eating recipes <laughs> on Eden's day and I don't I apologize Kenny if you're watching oh don't you, feel sorry uh, more for me <laughs> next week I'm going to do a soup from unprocessed that is long overdue that, that people don't realize there's some really good recipes in unprocessed the people until I made that nutrient rich black bean soup and by the way Shayla wrote and said it was the, the bomb diggity to quote. Um, yeah, there's, there are some really good recipes on process that have been overlooked. So since my book is not quite yet out, I'm gonna do the tomato and tortilla soup next week. And uh, if you wanna follow along with me, why don't we all cook at the same time? Because we finished the show just in time for dinner. So this is actually taking up quite a lot of it, which is good because I like to use it all up. There we go. So I'm going to cover each muffin. Do you want to say some of the ingredients in the cheese sauce? Well, or no? I'm going to just tell them that it's cauliflower based, which is really cool. And I don't know I'm going to. They're going to have to wait for my book because I am going to. I'm not going to withhold anything. I'm going to give the recipe, or at least I'm going to demonstrate the recipe. Hopefully, you'll buy the book, but I'm going to show it. So I've got a little left. Maybe I can just uh, yeah, I hate when there's a little left. You know, me and my OCD, it's got to come out even. There we go. Whoops. Two even. Okay, there we go. So now we got that. And then what I'm going to do is when it comes out, I'm going to top each one with a little piece of steamed broccoli for the presentation. Now, normally I would cook my broccoli in the air fryer, but I've told you before, because of the way my kitchen is, I cannot use the air fryer if I'm using any other appliance, which is why I can't do air fryer demos for you guys. Plus, they'd be really boring because with an air fryer, you put it in, you push a button, there's nothing else to do. So here we go. We're going to stick it in the oven, which I've already preheated to 350. And the oh, show is over. Okay, so now let's get on to the pancakes. So the way we know this pan is hot enough is you do the little water test. So you drop a little drop of water. And if it rolls around like a little marble, it's ready. All right. So we're going to do a pancake first. And this batter is really, really thick. I might have to scoop it out. Whoops. There we go. Generally, I just make one giant pancake, and that's how I eat it. I'm just going to roll it around. We're going to have a giant pancake. All right. There we go. And then I'm going to take the rest of the batter and put it in my preheated waffle iron. This is so good. Ugh. Now, if you want a great waffle recipe, go to Kristen Bummer's blog, Beans Not Bambi. And she has a delicious pumpkin oat waffle. Terrific. And if you want a great pancake recipe, go to Kathy Fisher's Straight Up Food book or blog and make her oatmeal lemon pancake. So let's just get all of that out of here. Let's 
spread it around. I mean, this is amazing. It's, this is food. this is actual food I would eat. You know, it's oats, it's banana, it's almond milk. It's just the way it's configured. There we go. I love the Vitamix, but the thing I like better about the Blendtec is it's easier to get every last bit out because of the shape. It's square instead of round. So I'll just spread this around as best I can. It's not enough batter to go quite all the way to the end. That looks like some oat looks like the date didn't get blended. Okay, all right, there we go. All right, close the top, and we'll see what happens. All right, so, boy, we've got a lot of recipes done. And I didn't bring any questions in with me. Oh, I've got one more recipe, though. So when it starts to, like, be able to be flipped easily, which, you know, can take one or two minutes, I am not a pro at pancakes. It's not something I do a lot. So when I can start to flip it easily, then I'm going to flip it. Flip it good. And I probably, it would probably have been easier if I didn't make the world's largest pancake right now, but you know me. There we go. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh, my God. I mean, it smells like, like Sara Lee banana cake, so this is so good. I wonder if Kenny's watching. He's at a conference. He's probably so upset. Poor Kenny. Oh, so that thing, deep, deep body pressure cooker, to tell me that it's come up to pressure. And the reason it came up to pressure so quickly is because we used boiling water. JP asked about syrup. JP? You mean our JP? Our JP. Well, the only reason I'm in this kitchen all by myself is because you canceled, and then you said you were going to come back, but then it was too late because I already bought all the ingredients. So I don't, I don't have maple syrup. I don't use maple syrup. I don't use syrup at all. I would use fresh fruit or put blueberries in, but Charles likes this date syrup, which is just dates, and that's nothing else. And the code, at, you get it at I Love Date Lady, and the code is Chef AJ for 15% off. So, oh, this is like Yum. one. Not quite done yet, so we're waiting for it to cook on the other side. Oh my God, it smells so I good. I'm not about, I'm not that, I'm not the, I don't make the most attractive food. You know, even when I worked as a pastry chef for five years, my job was to make it taste good. They had somebody whose job was just to plate it, so, yeah. Hey, so, if you're not signed up for the Live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference, We'll still give you $100 off with the coupon code BAILEY100. Bailey is not capitalized, no spaces. We have added speakers, so now in addition to our keynote speaker, Dr. Neil Barnard, and Dr. Doug Lyle and Dr. Alan Goldhammer and myself and John Pierre, we have two more speakers. We have Dr. Rosanna Alviera, who many of you said you loved what she talked about on my Healthy Living show a couple weeks ago about fat and the experiments she's doing with her genetic twin sister about how certain people really can't have very much fat and not be fat. And Sharon McCrae is going to be doing a talk on how to transition families. And JP is going to be doing a men's group. So, uh, you know, if, if you want to bring family members to the conference to eat with you, but they can't come for free to the conference, we're going to just charge you our price for the meals. That's what some families do. And if you have a husband, there is one session he is allowed to attend for free, and that is the men's group. So here we go. I think it's ready. JP said blueberries and applesauce. Oh, that, is that a way to make a pancake? So there we go. Maybe he means as a topping. Okay. I didn't oh, see. Oh, man. Look at this, guys. Oh, perfect pancake. Perfecto. Look at that. Mm. Are you able to eat and, and talk at the same time? I know it's not perfectly round, but... Oh, my god! Doesn't it smell like banana that cake? That smells like heaven, I know. Guys. It is. So thank you to Armin oh. at the Big Man's World for such an amazing recipe. So this is still cooking. You don't want to lift it up too quickly. Are you able to eat it while we talk or not? Sure, I can have some. You want a fork? Yeah. You want to just pick it up and then you can tell people honestly how good it is. Do you want any date syrup on it or? She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. This one's almost empty. Haven't, haven't tried it yet, guys. Oh, it's so good. Shoot, the date syrup is... Okay, I'll get it. Uh, uh, oh, I think I set it down. Set what down? The date, isn't it over there? Wait, I'll get it. It's high up. That one's empty. Oh. Okay. There we go. I love date lady. Whoa, there we go. I love date lady. Thank you for sending me this adorable bottle of date syrup. That's the website. 15% off with code Chef AJ. Tastes I mean, good. Hey, you know, sugar is sugar, guys. But if somebody's going to eat it, I'd rather have it come from dates. Oh, my God. I know. Isn't it good? I'll tell you. 
All right, so now, believe it or not, that's four recipes, no, three recipes down. Hi, Bailey. So now we're going to do what I call airplane salad. Why do I call it airplane salad? This is why. So I travel a lot, and it's pretty easy to get fruit everywhere you go, even in airports. Not as easy to get vegetables, and you can sometimes get salad, but it'll be doused with some kind of oily dressing. You can't get liquids in through TSA. Let me see, what am I? There's something I've got to show you. Very important. My little, oh, there it is. Okay. So, I've got to have my greens. I'm addicted to, agree, to greens, and especially arugula, which is interesting because I always hated arugula, and I always hated grapefruit, but together they're amazing, and if I don't get arugula almost every day, I go into withdrawal. So, I call this airplane salad because it's, if you take something like that's very delicate, like those field greens, those very nice things that they give you at the salad bar restaurants, and put salad dressing on it, it's, it's just going to wilt, it's going to get mushy, it's not going to taste very good. And if you can't really get dressing, Eden, you should, guys should see Eden, Eden is having mouth gasms right now. You want to come in front of the camera? No. You want to be, how, you want to see how cute Eden is, you guys got to come to me. Nikki just office. said it's fun to see Eden eat something good, it's so expressive. <laughs> Boy, is she adorable. Oh, thank you. Maybe I'll make it for Kenny next week. Oh, the wa wait till you try the waffle. Oh, okay. God. So, uh, so there's certain things that stand up better to dressing and certain dressings that will not make things a mushy mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whoa, wow, can you believe it, guys? The oak groats are ready, but we're not going to release the pressure because it won't taste good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with two bags of arugula. I like to have a pound, but these are seven ounce bags. Oh well, so it's 14 ounces, you know, what can you do? So this is the organic arugula from Trader Joe's, my favorite. All right, I'm just gonna put it in the bag. And what's nice about arugula is it can smoosh down, so I can get a lot of it in my travel bowl, you'll see. Whereas certain things like, you know, that are harder, like cucumbers, you can't smoosh them down as much. See, because you can see this is 14 ounces of arugula, but I can smush it so it's going to fit into my bowl. And then I'm going to add a 10 ounce bag of angel hair cabbage. I like the angel hair better because it's more tender, it's easier to eat. If you can't find angel hair, I get this at Whole Foods. If you can't find the angel hair, then simply, um, you know, shred it yourself. But I really like the texture better. When things are cut up fine, they're easier to eat like this, and you can refer to my video, the, uh, I think it's the seven or eight secrets of superior salad satisfaction. And then the third ingredient, and then there's a fourth optional ingredient, are scallions. And so what I like to do is, because I have terrible knife skills, is I, I have, I can't find my kitchen shear, so I just buy a designated pair of scissors at the 99 cent store, and I just use that to cut these as finely as possible. And if you don't like onion, don't put it in. But if you do like it, put in as many or as little as you like, you know? Now, um, uh, Victoria, I believe, is the one that said this. So I do these live every Wednesday at the page you're watching right now. And by the way, please consider sharing it if you like these broadcasts right now with your share button. And then usually within 24 hours, I put them on YouTube on my Chef AJ page. And somebody commented on YouTube if I would show what I eat in a day. Um, like the other YouTubers did. Well, here's the thing. So I'm not a YouTuber. I have a YouTube channel mainly because that's the only way my sister can watch my stuff because she won't do Facebook. And when I had the live teleclass, she always often couldn't listen live. So that's really kind of, I'm not a YouTuber. There's no ads on my page. You, you know, I have all the things turned off. I don't make any money from my YouTube channel. So I'm not a YouTuber. Not that there's anything wrong with being a YouTuber. So, you know, I, I've watched these videos where they sit there and you, they eat. And that's not what I'm about. Plus, yeah, so plus the fact that I've already told you guys over and over ad nauseum what I eat in a day, and I have so many free webinars on my website, eatunprocessed.com, Day in the Life of Chef AJ, How to Cook for the Week, Easy Meals to Make You Thin on my YouTube page, um, More Easy Meals to Keep You Thin. So the thing is, guys, is I eat the same thing every day. Now, that doesn't mean I eat exactly the same thing. I vary the category, so I might not eat a, a Hannah yam every day, I might eat a Garnet one day, or a Stokes one day, or a Japanese one day, or a Hannah or Hawaiian the other day, but I pretty much eat the same thing every day. Vegetables, starch, a little fruit, rinse and repeat. You know, variety is the kiss of death for the food addict, and as Heather 
says, Heather Goodwin, who's lost over 300 pounds in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, variety is the spice of obesity. So I keep it really simple. When I have a new recipe, I'll show you. But for the most part, I eat the same thing every day. And by the way, if you live in Southern California, Heather's going to be speaking at the Orange County Meetup that is hosted by Shada and Zena on Sunday, February 18th. Eden's going to be driving us, so if you go, you can meet me and Eden and Shada and Zena and Heather in person and a lot of other people from the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. Okay, so there we go. JP says that's good exercise no, to chop scissors. that. Yeah, <laughs> chopping. Okay, so now, well, let me check my waffle. Might not be ready if you can open. Yeah, but I, 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 it smells kind of burning. Oh my God, eh, that's crazy. No, because it has like that burning smell. What if I can never open it? Oh my goodness, let's see, try this. I need you here, JP. Yeah. Oh baby, OMG, it wow. is ready. I go by smell, you know? All right, look at that beauty. Let me get this out of the way. Wow. Like I said, this was so delicious. I could only eat about half of it. And the top just popped right off. Yeah. You don't need any oil, everyone. No oil. Look at this. Don't, don't be a sucker, guys, and listen to them. Look at this. Oh, oh my God. Holy. This is crunchy. This is delicious. This is perfect. So, uh, Armin Yum. from The Big Man's World, if you didn't know, your pancake batter makes... Can you hear how crunchy this is? You want some, Eden? Did you already eat that pancake? Of course I oh did. Oh my God, well you gotta save some of this waffle for Charles, okay? Oh, of course. Um, and if you want the syrup on it, you can. Now, so what I would do, I'm gonna give Eden half and Charles is gonna have half for dessert. And what I would do, the way I would eat this, um, is I would probably make a, a blueberry uh, chia jam, the recipe's in my book, or and I might stick a blueberry or blackberry in every Wow. I want them Look, to hear everyone. how crunchy it is, okay? So please crunch when you eat it. So <laughs> there you go. All right. So oh my god! Isn't that amazing? Mm -mm. Okay, so back to the salad. So now, this is a lot to a lot of people. So what is this? This is 14 plus 10 is 24. Now, this isn't even two pounds. So this is like less than I would normally eat salad-wise. So what you want to do is you want to put a dressing on that's not going to make it all mushy. And so what I recommend is one of the Bima and Paz vinegars. Now, my favorite flavor is grapefruit. And if you come to the Live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference in Vegas on August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd, Chef Terry will not only be there with all of her flavors, but she is creating a signature flavor just for the conference based on the suggestions of the people that have bought their tickets to wow. Vegas. And by the way, we have just added a third bonus day at no extra charge on Friday, August 31st. Dr. Doug Lyle is doing his famous True North session for 90 minutes at 2 o'clock, and then I'll probably end up giving the lecture too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a half a cup, and again, you can take more or less to taste, of my favorite flavor. Very crunchy. Balsamic. Isn't it delicious though? Yes. I know. It's like the best thing. So I'm going to take a half a cup, and I might end up using more or less. I'll let you know. Mm. Now, if I just in case Eden wants some of these, uh, normally I just use my own hands to massage it, because after all, I'm the one that's going to be eating it. But since Eden is here, and she may want to taste it, and she is a germaphobe who always <laughs> asks me every time I go out after I use the bathroom if I wash my hands or not. <laughs> guess sometimes you don't. Well, but maybe I didn't do anything in there. I went in there okay, to flat iron okay. my hair. I didn't know that I had to wash my hands after flat ironing my hair. Well, so it was now, because JP was in the bathroom, and I thought you were JP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And right. you came out, so I thought. So, I'm actually going to need more. I'm going to use the rest of the bottle. So, that was maybe not, not quite a cup, maybe two-thirds. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to massage it, because then it's going to get all, oh, God, this already smells good. Now, so what do you want to do if you don't use vinegar for whatever reason, but you still want that lovely grapefruit flavor? Well, then you're going to use a real grapefruit. You're going to squeeze it all over, and I've got a grapefruit right here. But in my case, I am going to actually put the grapefruit in. So I'm massaging my... And what is so great about this salad, and because of the way I have the dressing, is I made this, when I was in Florida, I made this at about 8 o'clock in the morning. As, as my lunch for, at the conference, and there was about half left, and I ate it at 2 o'clock the next day on the plane. I kept it chilled, and it was still the same. Wasn't that waffle terrific? Uh, what do you think was better, the waffle or the pancake? Um, I mean, they're the same, but, you know. The waffle, because it wasn't as cooked? 
Oh, because it was in its crunchy, huh? Or the the pancake, okay. I mean. The so, pancake was better. All right. So, oh, you really think? See, and I like the waffle better. Okay. So now you like that kind of burnt taste a little oh, bit. Well, I could have cooked it a little less. But the point is, is it didn't stick. So now I'm gonna take my bowl. Where did it go? My plain bowl. I got. Oh, here it is. So this is from Tupperware and Cassie. What I love about this is the fork is there, and you got to be real careful trying to get stuff through TSA, but if, if you're just using it for your regular lunch, there's a place for the dressing in there. And so what's really cool about this salad is that I can really push it down and get a lot of it in and really keep pushing it and pushing it. And like I say, it stays really fresh for a couple of days, even with the Biman Pazan. So there we go. Look at that. I could probably get a little more in if I wanted to. And this is what I call airplane salad because I take it on the airplane. Now, let me show you one other trick. Now, I've got to get the grapefruit out. Now, normally when I'm traveling, I take a lot of starch with me. I take my, I take my starch cookies because then I don't have to worry if I can't find starch. And I always have some kind of potato or corn with me. But let's say you want to make this and you're not traveling. Well, every salad should have some grains in it. So I have here my sun-dried tomato and artichoke quinoa, which I already made. And you'll get the recipe in my book. I'll demonstrate it one day very soon. So for eating, you always want to put some grain in your salad. Oh, we can have this for dinner eating. Oh, this looks so Oh, my God. This looks so, so good. Mm, not as good as a, a waffle, bit. but anyway. Yum. So you'll get the sun-dried tomato artichoke uh, quinoa recipe very soon. So we can eat that. Excellent. So that's, oh, no, oh, so the grapefruit. So I'm going to show you this really cool gadget. I think it was like 75 cents from Tupperware. So I hate getting the rind and the pith under my nails. So what I do is I just use this little thing. Actually, when, when we had Dr. Furman on the show. You can mist your face. <laughs> yeah, he, when Dr. Furman was on, he was really fast at peeling oranges. I'm not so good. So this thing kind of, I don't know what it does exactly, but it, it does work pretty good. And you have to go all the way around. I don't know, grapefruit with arugula, it's like divine. So there we go. So now, then it's really easy to grab the peel and get it off. Well, it's supposed to be, it's easier, let's put it that way. There we go. So I'm going to add a grapefruit to this because it's going to be so good with the grapefruit dressing and the grapefruit. And then we're going to come back. Do you guys have any questions about food in general? If you, if I didn't get your, I know some of you submitted questions. Thank you. I got them. But I will wait till next week when Jean Pierre is is available to help me answer them. And he doesn't like the food. He's a breatharian. He doesn't ever eat, so <laughs> he thinks it's a waste of time to be in the kitchen. I'm oh, just he eats, just I'm, not in front of us. We've never seen him eat, and I've known him for eight years. So uh, any questions about any of the ingredients or anything like that? Um. Anybody have questions about Vegas, you know, how to get your $100 off? There we go. I don't know how to Can you share this. some Valentine's Day recipes? Oh, Mary I Caldwell. Yeah, I did yesterday at my cooking class. They were all, uh, you know, I think the best Valentine recipe is ones that are good for your heart. So that would be all the UWO recipes. Good comment. Right. So there we go with the grapefruit. So hot. Yeah, don't poison the people you love on Valentine's well, Day. That makes a lot that? of sense. So I'm just going to throw the grapefruit in, and that's going to make it even better. I don't know why I've got so much of this pithy stuff here, but try to get it off I'll get some of it off I got this really cool knife from dr. Hans deal in Florida it says chip on it so any recipes let me think well see traditionally Valentine's you know nothing says I love you like a box of chocolates which is why we did you know a pretty much all chocolate dessert class yesterday at the cooking school I have a couple of classes coming up in the next couple months there but you need to live in LA they won't live stream at the cooking school but I will be live streaming my Healthy Taste Delicious class. I only teach about every other month, believe it or not now. Um, I used to teach every week and then every other week and then once a month. And uh, Gustavo's coming to LA to live stream the class on, uh, on Sunday, March 4th. So that's next month. So we'll get details for that very soon. So uh, obviously you won't get to taste the recipe, but at least you'll be able to uh, you know, see how I make everything. 
I love actually. grapefruit. Yeah, and then there's there's also going to be, um, you know, I give a lecture. In my cooking class, I give a lecture that I don't give anywhere else. So that might be a reason to take it. It's a kind of a, like, sort of like a nutritional science lecture. So I'm just going to cut this up. And we'll decide how much we'll put in. Grapefruits are pretty big. I, I hear you're not supposed to eat them if you're on some kind of medication. I forget which one. Yeah, I can't remember JP either. Knows. But, uh, yeah, I never liked grapefruits, but man, I never liked any of the stuff I'm eating now. It's incredible how tastes change once you narrow it down. Totally. Yeah, it's amazing. So anyway, if you didn't want to use the grapefruit bimon pas, what I would do is just squeeze a whole grapefruit on top of it. That's what I would do. And that might be enough. Let's see how much grapefruit. No, we want to have more. Okay. So... If anybody has any tips on how to get all this extra pith off, Robin said know. statins. Thank you, Robin. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Lipitor, yeah. Which Robin? I know Blood pressure name. meds. I can't eat them. That's what I thought. I thought it was blood uh, pressure, but well, it sure. can, can she get off her blood pressure meds? By Nikki by said cholesterol them? meds. Well, can maybe, maybe they, it's maybe they can Coumadin. It's a blood thinner. No grapefruit. A lot of apparently a lot wow. of meds. Well, maybe you guys can get off your meds by following the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. So many people Good did. Good point. You know, many people before you have gotten off their medications yeah. by following this program. So I want to take the, the, any other questions before we, we don't have to go a full hour today, but as long as we're making dinner. I don't see any questions okay. right now. Well, share this broadcast, guys, so I can get more people involved in healthy eating. Next week, we hopefully JP will be back. That's what we hope for. Let's see if there's anything going on. Oh, if you um, if you wanted to go to healthy Get Healthy Sacramento on February 25th with myself and Dr. Doug Lyle and Dr. James Benny, that is sold out, Linda Middlesworth event, so there are going to be live streaming it at a fraction of the cost. I did post that information on my Facebook page, which is the page you are watching right now. I believe it's only like $24.99, so that should be good. If you are in UWL and live anywhere near Sacramento, we'll be having a UWL potluck the night before, so hopefully we'll see you there. And Do you want go. to mention which webinar people can find the starch cookie recipe? Ah, the starch cookies, I think, were the ele was it elegant entertaining or was it the holiday one? But go to my webinar page. On the, on the, on, they're, called, um, they're called pumpkin pie bites. Right. I think it was the holiday webinar. They're very good. I can show you what they look like, but uh, let's see. You want to hold this up? Mm -hmm. Yum. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Wow, Eden, Eden made everything, you guys. I did. It was good. Everything. Okay. So, I haven't had a pancake or a waffle in so long. Forever, I know. Because I don't do flour. Yeah, well, you know, technically you can argue it is flour. Yeah, I will. You know? you, yeah, it is flour, but, but I'll make oh, an exception oh, today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Looks like these are ready, guys. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm, we're going to have a great dinner, but unfortunately, we got to walk Bailey first. So, here we go. That's all right. We can burn some, <laughs> burn some calories yeah, before yeah, we, we gotta walk before, we. before we eat it. So turn the oven off. It sure gets hot in here. I, I'm really afraid to show you the oat roads because I don't want to. I don't want them to get glucky. Yeah, they're not ready to be opened yet. So what you do? See, these, you gotta really let these cool, guys. Really, or they're not gonna pop out. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin them because you do have to let things cool so you can pop them out. Maybe I can take one out with a spoon just to show you, okay? But I do recommend you let them cool. Take, well, this, is, this plate's too big. Let's get a small plate. Oh, so delicious. Mm. And then you can put a little broccoli on top. And there we go. Oh, these are so good. Yeah. So these are like cheesy broccoli mashed potatoes. We'll wait for them to cool. Cheesy mashed potatoes. Yeah, maybe I won't call them stuffing muffins because it was with when it when I made it with rice, they came out like perfect muffins. So we may have to yeah. rename these. But well, I'm sure that if we waited longer, uh, yeah. it would and come out more uniform. Wait. Gonna, ooh, this is hot. But uh, you want to eat this, Eden? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, you work here, you get paid in food. Mm -mm -mm. All my people are volunteers. Look at that. Was there almond milk in this? Very tiny bit in the very beginning for the mashed potatoes because I don't, ha I can't find oat milk without sugar. So mm. if you guys really want me to release the pressure to show you the oat groats, I will. But I, and then I'll have to put the top back on to get it to. Do, is there a vote? Do they want me to release the pressure? Um, what's the vote? Um, 
I don't see any no votes. Voting. I am Jewel or Joel, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Mm -hmm. I had a question about calorie density. Mm. You guys, if you Sorry. ask really big questions, it cuts them off after about the first mm -hmm. sentence, so. Yeah, we only can see um, the first like line, line and a half. Let me show the hot. She said, I make my crepes from three grains. Uh -huh. Miller, millet must be buckwheat, Wait. quinoa, soaked oh, oh, for this 24 is Jewel hours. Asking? This is yeah. Jewel asking. Yes, so Jewel, um, Jewel, you're not, I met you. you. You do not look at all overweight to me. And in the conversation that we had for an hour, you don't appear to suffer from food addiction. And if you do, it's probably very low on the vulnerability scale. And so I think it's absolutely fine what you're doing. And, and less, you know, here's my, here's my philosophy. When in doubt, leave it out. If you eat something... Even if it's arugula and you can't stop eating it, for you, it's not a healthy food. And that's why I wish I could just be hard and fast and say it's a one-size-fits-all. But it's not, because the truth is, as you recover from food addiction, there's certain foods that maybe you used to eat a lot, like in my case, dates, that you kind of want to be aware of. And then there's other foods. I can eat these pancakes and waffles now. They're not that sweet to me. I mean, they're okay, but I ate them both the other day, and I thought they were good, but... I don't want to keep making them because it's much harder than what I usually do. Now, somebody said that the videos have been blurry. If you're watching on YouTube, that's only been for the first few minutes. And guys, that's a Facebook issue. This is a free service Facebook Live. It's not on our end. This is a brand new iPhone. But they said they couldn't see the three hot sauces that are SOS free from Beam on Pa. So I want to show them again. Chef Terry is such a genius with condiments. We've got a pineapple lime. We've got a coconut lime. And this is the brand. I know a lot. Bima and Paz. Bima and Paz. www.bemaandpas.com. 10% off with code Chef AJ, no spaces. And then the garlic cilantro, which is going to be my favorite. Oh, you can see it's already. See, just by letting it cool a little bit, I'm going to be able to poke it out. But yep. you got to let it cool, just like any lasagna. So I know we didn't go the full hour, but boy, it's hot in here. These so are delicious. Thank you. Well, we'll have them for dinner with the salad. Oh, yeah. Kenny, don't, I hope you're not watching because you're missing, like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So think about it. The breakfast, well, by the way, I don't mind eating breakfast for dinner. I would eat the pancakes or waffles for dinner. So Me too. You, got, you got the pancakes and the waffle for a great breakfast, especially for kids, for your family. For the lunch... Oh, by the way, the oat groats is another great breakfast. And oat groats are savory, unless you put sweetener in them. These can be used anywhere you would use rice or quinoa, in your salad, as a side dish. Delicious. So you got your oats. Oh, the, pre the pressure has released. Um, the oats can be for all three meals. You've got your salad for lunch. Oh, somebody said, what about the sorbet? Oh, my God, one more recipe. Thank you. Oh, yeah, wow. thank you, Pat, Patty. Yeah. Thank you so much. Let me just show you. We have time. Yeah, we do have time. Because that's a quick recipe. Yeah. Let me just show you right now what the oat groats look like. Oh, this cheese is amazing. Thank you. And it has no, um, you know, it's, it's, oh, now I'm going to show you guys that right now, there's nothing wrong with it eating it now, but it's just too, it's too liquidy. That's why we want to keep, but you can see that it does look very much like rice. Rice, yeah. Except that it has oh, an entirely different flavor and it's absolutely delicious. So we're going to eat that later. Thank you for reminding me that we did not do the sorbet. So this recipe is because of Ronit. And she said that she lives in one of those tiny houses. And she can't, and she wishes she could have an air fryer and a, de you know, and a dehydrator and not even room for an Instant Pot. She, she doesn't even have a blender. But she said she does have a food processor. And she said she wishes she could make those sorbets that we often make, like, you know, banana, banana ice cream like you make with the, the champion juicer, mm -hmm. the Yonanas, or the Vitamix. Now, I happen to have all of those because I'm a chef. Now, I want to show you, you can actually do it in your food processor. This is my brand new Cuisinart because my $89 Oster died last night at the cooking class. Oh, no. But luckily, I got it for only $10 more than the Oster. I got it for 99 at Costco because I got it was on sale, but it's not quite as big as my Oster was, but hopefully it'll work. I'm sure it'll work, but it is nice. So you can actually do the sorbets in the food processor. I'm gonna show you how. So we're gonna do cherry, because cherry's my favorite flavor. And we are also going to add one of JP's favorite products. So I don't know if Rick, from Beet Boost is watching, but we are going to use the Beet Boost to up the nutrition. 
And to anyone watching, if you are missing anything or you watched late or came in late, we always post it afterwards and it's put on YouTube within 24 hours. So if you're miss, missing anything or you think she's talking too fast, you can just rewatch it. Yep. So this is the Beat Boost and it comes in these little packets, which I'm going to use today. But it also comes, I prefer it, in, in, the, in the bottle like this. So there we go. So what we're going to do is we put the, we're using the S blade, which is the most common blade used. It looks like the letter S, not the shortening blade or the slicing blade. And we're going to take a pound of frozen dark sweet pitted cherries and we're going to put it in the food processor along with one packet of beet boost, which is the equivalent of six, tart, six whole beets and 30 tart cherries. I've made beet banana and ice yeah. cream and oh, it's really yeah. good. Beet, this, this stuff is good and, and, and JP talks about its benefits, especially when you exercise for inflammation and that kind of stuff. I just like it because it tastes good. So we're gonna put this on and then we're gonna process. Just, if you don't want to use the beet boost, you don't have to. It's just, I love the flavor of it. Ooh. Yum. Now, I, I kept these out of the freezer because I couldn't open the freezer during the shoot. If I hadn't done that, this would have been a lot firmer. But even if it wasn't, look at that. You want this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Eden, Eden doesn't eat much at home. So, uh, so well, I'm all I've had today was salad and veggies. I'm so. just kidding. So I'm going to save some for Charles. I'm going to put it in this little thing. Again, it's usually much thicker, guys, but remember, we've been yeah. on for almost an hour, and this has been defrosting for an hour. If you, if you don't defrost it, it comes out very, very thick. And you can see it's not that bad right now. It is still pretty thick, and this stuff is just delicious. Nothing like cherries, and it doesn't have a strong beet flavor, so that's that. So uh, thank you so much for your questions that were related to these foods and ingredients, and next week I'll be back with JP and we'll answer all the questions that didn't get answered. Let's see if I can get these out yet. Mmm. Pretty good. It's delicious. Eden, Eden ate good today. So there we go. Six recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Please consider signing up for the Ultimate Weight Loss Program if you would like help conquering your food addictions and cravings, and sign up for the conference if you want more information. Next week, we're gonna make the tomato and tortilla soup in the book on process if you wanna cook along with me. If you don't wanna use the corn tortillas, you can just use some fresh or frozen corn instead. So thank you so much for watching another episode of, I don't even know the name Wait, of Weight Loss Wednesday. Wait, last Wednesday, because I do Healthy, healthy Living uh, Live in today also, at the, uh, which I did today with Janine Elder, some good stuff, she made potato tots. Thanks for watching episode 62 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, and I truly believe you can have both the health and the body you so richly deserve. Take care, everyone. <laughs>